gonna go back to the older films mm-hmm. and the old school Z, Z movies yeah the non-canon ones and we're going with the best finisher from those films mm-hmm. yes. and as I won I get to go first you do <laughs> yes and I'm I'm going with a beast of a one angry angry Goku mm-hmm. um our first iteration of Ultra Instinct where Goku likes to absorb his spirit bomb. And that's when Goku absorbs his spirit bomb to punch Android 13. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, okay. That wasn't... Yeah, fine. Yeah. It didn't come up on my yeah, radar. Yeah. All right. I, I, like to, I like to think it was the inspiration for, um, <laughs> for Ultra Instinct, where they got the idea from. Mm. I, think, I think they just like ripping off the old films, really, when you think about it. Yeah, They've got Goku, bit. Black, and Turles. You've got them absorbing the spirit bomb for Ultra Instinct, but it's just it it's excellent. I mean, I don't know if you've watched it recently, but Not it's recently. just no. It's just he's got his spirit bomb. He's going, he's going, and then he's just like, Do you know what? <laughs> Inhales it, yeah. and it's just he's just got this it's angry. Goku. What a sound effect, by the way! That was incredible. <laughs> he just, <laughs> just the entire spirit bomb, mm. and it's just like the just the sky turns red. And it's just raging, angry Goku. Like mm. angry Goku is great, but this is just truly angry Goku. And he just floats towards thirteen, just pure, just this is silent. Like it's just bits of metal flying everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just thirteen. It's just swinging at him, but his punches are just his fists are disintegrating, and then just one punch, mm. and it's just he's gone, and he just disintegrates. And it's just, it's, it's that, it's that time where back in the day where Goku was scary. Yeah. Like where Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan was the beast mode. Yeah. Where like, yeah, it was like, it, it was, it was where Super Saiyan was peak. Yeah. So I'm kind of surprised. Simple, I, think it was, I think it was where Super Saiyan was a simpler time. Hmm. I think that's the way I look at it. I'm kind of surprised they didn't explore that a bit more. Like, I know the movie's non-canon, I guess, but also absorbing the energy of the spirit bomb and then fighting with it. I'm surprised they didn't really explore that a bit more because that's a lot of power and it's not a new form. It's just, like, a massive amount of energy all at once. To be quite frank, that's probably why they did it with Ultra Instinct. Hmm. I, I honestly think that's why they went back to the idea. Yeah, but it's kind of a rework, though, because it, it like, as well oh, yeah, as it just a, being a new It's a form, rework, definitely. Like, yeah, but it does think, increase the senses, think, that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think it's why they might have used it as a trigger or something like that, because mm. they thought, like, in the past, like, it's the spirit bomb is this, like, it's this amazing amount of energy and power and mm. pureness and... There's all these things within the spirit bomb that's supposed to make it special. Yeah, it's not just an energy blast, is it? It's mm. like it, it's a special ability where it's a life force and everything like that. And that's why it wasn't just a blast that triggered UI. Yeah, it was yeah. something special that triggered UI. And I think that's probably why, maybe why they allowed that to happen. Mm. So I think it could legitimately be an inspiration um it would not surprise me at all um if it was linked in some way i think mm. they have actually like jokes aside with the turtle as goku black and, and and this i think they have looked back quite a lot on the old films and and took inspiration oh yeah 100 um, percent. yeah and i think but I watched when I was thinking of, of I've got a few that I love for the um for my ideas and I think yeah this was the one that I liked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, that would be I I kind of wish they did do that move. It would all, almost be like a a glass cannon type move uh where if they want to take it more literally and just say yes he absorbs the energy but then he is extremely slow and you know, he can't really dodge. 
But once he hits this one move, it's like a massive amount of power all in one move. I think that'd be pretty cool. And it could be useful in some situation I'm sure they could think of. But that'd be pretty cool to see. I wouldn't mind it. You, you could have it where it's like you've got an enemy like Jiren who's like, he's always waiting. Like, like you had you had him where it was like, um, where Jiren ate Vegeta's massive final flash mm. or whatever. Where it was like, you've got an enemy who's like, he's so full of himself basically that he's like, fine, I'll take your attack. Mm. And it's like, you've got that type of enemy where it's like massively underestimates it and then he gets this attack and it's just like, actually, this just annihilated you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it would be it would be quite an underwhelming win. It was kind of like, well... I mean, you say that, but then there's animes like One Punch Man where it's just, boop, end of fight. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's the entire anime. He kills True. people in one punch. But yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind for just some random filler villain that would work. Why not? Yeah. It, like they could like, use it on the uh, the copy Vegeta, where it's like this one punch completely like wipes them out and then Vegeta's back to normal, gets his energy back or whatever. To be fair, I would have preferred it was just one punch at the beginning of the entire arc, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just painful. Mm. Um, but no, that's that's my choice because I just, like, yeah, it was a simpler time and it was, <laughs> it was, it was angry rage, Goku. It's the, it's the, it's the rage that you see on his face. It's like, mm. it, it's, it's almost like you can see he's struggling with the amount of energy and, and, and power that's in the spirit bomb mm. that he's had to absorb, but then like the explosive power all around him, it's just oh, it's it's a it's scary, and I it like is. it. Fair enough, fair enough. Good but one. It's a it's an interesting pick. I'll give you that much, but I feel like I've no, never no. been more confident right now <laughs> in a lot of it. I know I know what you're gonna pick. Go on, man. Try and guess. You're going with the dragon punch against Rudigon. I'm not. That was my backup option, actually. Oh, that was my second it was my choice. Back, it was my backup too. Yeah, because uh, we've reacted to the dragon fist, and we've already said that it's a great move. And I did have it as my backup, but not as my number one. My my pick for the Hall of Fame this week is the Stardust Breaker against Shinemba. Oh. Yeah, a bit of Gogeta action. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, one. It is a very popular one because Gogeta has only been around twice in all of Dragon Ball and this was his first appearance and because of this one appearance he gained an army of fans who will defend him to the death as being the most powerful character in the show just from this one appearance in the Janemba film which is incredible. Um, but yeah, the Stardust Breaker is like this weird glowing universe of a ball <laughs> um, which throws at him, turns into stars and basically destroys all evil. That's what it does. And yeah, yeah completely destroyed Janemba and turned him back into this tiny teenage orc guy who works at the at the, uh, what's it called? The death place? <laughs> what's it called? You know, King it's Yama's hell. place. It's hell. Oh, hell no, he doesn't work at hell. He works at like the check-in station of of death with yeah. King Yama and uh, all that, all those people. It's not called the check-in station. I'm sure it's called. I think the it's just station. called the check-in station. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, he just works at the check-in station, and that's it. <laughs> just some teenage intern, first day on the job, maybe, um, who uh, gets infected with evil and turns into Janemba, and that's it. Which there's so many people who haven't seen that film and know. Janemba as Janemba and don't really understand the backstory or who he is or what he is exactly. And it's like, oh, Janemba is this really cool villain. You know, he's look at him. the worst villain ever. Yeah, he's a really cool yeah. design. He's got all of these like dimensional attacks where he turns things into cubes, which is a really cool attack. I really do like them. And the little like the like circle panel things which the blasts absorb into and all this stuff. He's got Rubik's some... cube. He's the Rubik's Cube bad guy. Yeah. And honestly, he does have a really cool design and really cool move set and all this stuff. So unique. But then people don't know about his first form, which is just this giant blob, which turned things into little pieces of, well, they weren't candy, but they were like, they looked like pieces of candy. And he was just changing the dimensions. 
just sitting there, not moving, not doing anything, just sitting, changing everything. And then before that, he was just some teenage orc guy <laughs> who got infected. And people don't know these sides of Janemba. Janemba is one of the worst villains in Dragon Ball, but uh, people don't even realize this. But the Star Stardust Breaker attack against Janemba to end it, it's the win and Hall of Fame pick. It just is. Just because there is an army of Gogeta fans and... I feel it could win through fan service. Yeah, um, 100%. 100%. But that is a cool move either way. It is, but it is, it is a very cool move. It's I a terrible he plant, thing. He plants it. He actually plants it in his chest, I think, to do it. I think he throws it at him. I, think, I know he, throw, he throws it at Broly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he also throws it at Janemba. Um, um, but... but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, no, it's an I, think, I think fat, I think even if they don't like the move, mm. purely against the fact that they just love Gogeta. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. They only love Gogeta <laughs> because of this film, because he doesn't get touched and he throws like one kick and then the, the star does break it and then that's it. Long, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure he does like a backflip kick off his face and then throws a star does break and then that's it. End of fight. So he does nothing. But just because he doesn't get he doesn't get touched and you know Goku and Vegeta couldn't kill him individually and all this other stuff that's going on they just think oh well Gogeta's the strongest person and this is also the film with Hitler in and it's just like come on this is an awful film it is one of the worst Dragon Ball films but also the Gogeta. animation is disgusting yeah the Gogeta's the Gogeta the animation is just so weird like the really thick black outlines around characters during the earth segments but not during the afterworld segments it's just, i don't understand any of the stylistic choices in this film at all yeah it's no it's like like janemba final form janemba looks great yeah Moves, that's great the the bad guy himself is a terrible bad guy the law of yeah. the bad guy awful hmm. You Mandolin's terrible. Mm. The story is terrible. The setup's awful. Makes no sense. Like animation's terrible. Mm. You get this great character in Gogeta. He's present and fights for about twenty seconds. We reacted yeah. to it. Um, he's literally there for about twenty seconds. Mm. So we don't even get the same flex. Like, and he's not. And then you never ever see him again ever until Brawly. Yeah. Um, and that's this and is that's the, the technically the later, yeah. and this yeah. version of Gogeta is also technically the canon version I guess even though he hasn't been brought into the anime yet so is he even still technically canon yet uh, pretty yeah. much but yeah. yeah so everything about this film is just very disappointing bar that 20 seconds basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah they introduced Gogeta great they had Janemba looking cool great apart from that this movie is utter trash a worst Dragon Ball film potentially but so, literally move, if you, yeah yeah so literally if you're gonna if you're gonna investigate this film just do that just yeah. look up like literally just watch our reaction that's it that, that, yeah. that's the only part worth watching just do yeah. our reaction but <laughs> the stardust breaker against janemba that is my move as best finisher because i do think it is a cool move and it did that is the only reason gogeta has so many fans is because of that move pretty much and just the appearance of gogeta so yeah i've got to give it to it but yeah like i said and like you said dragon fist was my backup against the rudigon really cool moment and a good use of Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> yeah, it is. But um, I do feel I want to give an honourable mention to um, your boy Gohan against Bojack. Yeah, fair enough. the um, family Kamehameha. Is that the one? Oh, no. Um, against Bojack when he turns Super Saiyan 3. Ah, three. yes. Kid Gohan he, still. Yeah, when he absolutely obliterates Bojack and his minions. Mm. Like he literally turns turns angry Gohan, which is which is the same as Cell, and literally they all try and beat him, and he's just walking towards Bojack, and he's just lashing out, just one shotting everyone, and it's just you just get the same flex again the yeah. way he did against like the Cell Juniors, mm. and it's just a thing of beauty, and it's just you love to see flex Gohan, kid, kid. <laughs> Kid Flex Gohan is 
is Tough, great yeah. because yeah. it's just like an angry teenager mm. and it's just like yeah i remember you you, doing, <laughs> you, you yeah it's like it's like you against sal it was like mm. yeah and it's just he does so well and then when he just bursts through bojack and he's just kind of like beating him and he's just like standing past him he's just like yeah you're dead yeah he's just, like, just he's past him just waiting for him just about just to explode, die. Yeah. he's just like yeah I've, I've killed you you just don't know it yet Oh, <laughs> no, that, that was a cool kill as well. Yeah, maybe that one, but um, honorable yeah. mention, it is honorable mention, it's a good honorable mention, but uh, yeah, I guess that's it for the Hall of Fame. The two picks this week is the absorbed spirit bomb punch against yes. Android 13. I guess that's what we're gonna call it because it isn't, yeah. it's yeah. just a punch, it, it isn't like, yeah. It doesn't have an actual move name, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, the Spirit Bomb Punch against Android 13 and the Stardust Breaker against Janemba. Those are the finishing moves that are fighting it out this week for the Hall of Fame. So you can go vote. Go click on our social links down below. You can see them right below. My name right there. Go check out the polls and we will find out next week who went as the Hall of Fame. But for now, let's move on to the hot take. <laughs> 